Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, it is October 13th, and this is our third budget workshop for the 2023 Presque Isle City Budget. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, quite a few departments to cover tonight. We're going to do uh, public safety building, utilities, debt service, echo rate, IT, city clerk, and general assistance. Uh, but before we jump into the individual departments, we have a guest with us tonight, uh, Ron Smith from RHR Smith and Company, to talk about uh, the Presque Isle um, audit. He's going to give us a little bit of information on our financial position as um, a city as a whole, and maybe some uh, possible directions we can explore with the assets uh, we have. So with that, I would invite Ron, please come on up, and you could just kind of introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, take a seat at the table. Um, talk about you know a little bit about your involvement with the city, and then we can kind of get this to you. So I'm Ron Smith. I'm the principal of RHR Smith and Company, one of them, and uh, I met about three weeks ago with, I'm assuming it was the Finance Committee, mm -hmm. and uh, Martin and Brad and Sharon, just to talk about you know the financial condition of the city and to go over um, uh, many things, kind of like a vision, some of the talking points of where we're at and what we're seeing out there in the world. I believe we probably do over half of the municipalities in the state of Maine. So, uh, so we have a lot of knowledge, you know, of who you are, you know, in, in, in the industry itself. <coughs> I really don't want to spend two hours going over that meeting, you know, but and I'm sure you don't want me to tonight. You don't know there's anybody back of me. You know, but uh, the highlight is the city had, good, good, had a great financial uh, position. Um, you know, there was some conversation about redirecting and allocating some assets more towards capital. Um, you got our highest clean opinion, you know, on December 31st, 21 audit. We're going to be knee deep in your 22 audit here pretty soon. I extended my hand to come back and answer any questions that you all may have and some of the direction, you know, that we had talked about and conversations that we had talked about uh, at that finance committee in, uh, meeting. And, and, and I'm here for you. I'm in the area. I was in the area. I'll be in the area again. So, so Martin had asked if I could attend, you know, based on you know the wanting of me too, and here I am. Perfect. Um, so I guess I'll start off with just <coughs> the conversation, and hopefully we talk for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll get to the departments. Um, <coughs> but I was fortunate enough to be able to sit in on the longer meeting where we talked about um, the assets the city does have, and maybe you could just give a real quick. Uh, about how the city of Presque Isle's assets match up with communities that are maybe similar to us and um, where our strengths are. Yeah, well, I, I think as I said in that meeting, you know, that uh, don't compare the city of Presque Isle to any other community. You know, I think you're in a unique position. I think Aroostook County is a very unique geographical area in the state of Maine. I think as things go in Aroostook County, a lot of things run through the city of Presque Isle. And, you know, and hence kind of where you've been, the development here, and and, um, you know, uh, uh, the future development and, you know, the, 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 the infrastructure road upgrades. I know that there was a conversation on housing and that was a focal point and, you know, and as I recall, you know, is what, what the conversation was, is looking at your assets and all the various pockets that you had, you know, in your capital improvement program, which I thought was light and I think that it probably even needs to be revisited and maybe the direction aligned to kind of like the future direction of the city. And um, uh, yeah, but, uh, but compared to other communities, it's pretty hard to compare the, the city of Presque Isle to, you know, to other communities, but I think your financial condition and health is, is well. You know, and sometimes when the, you know, the state has a bad year, it doesn't affect the city of Presque Isle and Aroostook County, or vice versa. Sometimes the, in the city of Presque Isle and Aroostook County has a bad year, it doesn't affect the state. So, and I know that there was a lot of talk about the focus of you know, the tourism and things like that, and kind of like the looking at the TIF, the airport, and certain things. I know that that was a topic of conversation, all talk of conversation to kind of put everything on the table for the city. I would like our debt position as far as the amount of money we owe. Well below the statutory, you know, requirement that you have. There's a statute out there that says what your debt position legally can be, and you're not even close to that. And what I said at that meeting is, you know, is that I would definitely consider using debt as a means to fund some 
fund some of these infrastructure needs. And what I see coming down the pipeline out there for infrastructure needs with the last, uh, you know, one of the last uh, congressional bills that was passed almost a year ago, you know, back in November of 21 with infrastructure, we haven't even seen the money yet. And I think that there's going to be various pools of money available to uh, local government in the, in the state of Maine. We're starting to hear about some of them right now. I think it'll be early next year, maybe spring of next year before we see about them, about more. Um, there's going to be some competitiveness to some of this, accessing some of this money. And I think it's probably in the best interest of the city to take a look at, you know, all of its financial portfolio and, 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 and review and assess where you're at right now, kind of what your vision is, and consider some reassessments. And then as I said at that meeting, and I'll say it here tonight, I think the city of Prescott is going to have to come out of their comfort zone. And I think that you're going to end up borrowing more money, you know, than what you typically would just because of some of these generational opportunities that are, that are headed your way. And other communities are doing it as we speak as well. So that is one thing that I can certainly speak to, you know, is really, you know, just kind of the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the local government positioning themselves and jockeying themselves to take advantage of some of these, you know, generational, you know, once in a lifetime monies that we just don't see in government often. So. And would that be something like the, 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 the concept from the federal government to, Yeah, no, no, I'm not sure I'd use any model of the federal government, I'll first say that, you know, but, uh, but as far as, you so know. What, like what opportunities, I guess? Would, I you think your talking? airport's going to be one that we talked about, you know, the people got to get here, so that they get here faster, you know, and you have, you, 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 you have a, a commodity in Aroostook County with that air, airport, and the, and the land and the businesses around that, I understood that you had housing needs and that there's, you know, some, some interest in that here. I understand you're redoing Route 1, that corridor out there. You know, now it's time to look and possibly maybe even consider moving, you know, uh, your downtown. I just don't know what downtown is in the city of Presque Isle, and may I suggest that probably that would be one of the things that uh, um, uh, uh, is considered, you know, as you go forward, you know, because you may have two downtowns. So downtown Portland isn't the same anymore, you know, downtown Bangor isn't the same anymore. And that's why I say you can't compare yourself to others. But I think that the concept is, is you gotta ask yourself, why isn't it the same? You know, and I think that the answers will be different for Prescott Isle than it was for a lot of other communities. So. Traditionally, as we talked about, Prescott Isle has been a, a pretty frugal and conservative community, and I don't think you need to change that path. But I think that you, I think there's going to be some opportunities that are going to force you to look at coming out of that comfort zone, yeah. and I think debt is going to be one of them, which isn't traditionally what would be done here in uh, Prescott Isle yeah. or Aroostook County, for that matter. So. And say like like the other communities or what's going to be available for Presque Isle to to tap into let's make it both of them I'll, I'll, I'll start with the easiest one you know Presque Isle and local government clearly pu public safety you know first responders I mean that 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 is good there's gonna be a r silly money you know going into you know going into there a lot of this first round of you know the ARPA funds was used in the broadband words and the things like that to get better communication. I'm not sure that's going over or being received as well as everybody thought it would be. You know, but uh, but yeah, I think public safety first responders is 
going to be one of the infrastructure needs out there with equipment, communication, things like that. Then I think roads, I think bridges, getting people in, getting people out. You know, I think that that airport is certainly going to be a, a huge asset for Aroostook County and the city of Prescott. So, and I see regionalization being a piece of it too. And I, I, I definitely think that, and I'm not sure, well, I am sure how that airport works right now and really the story behind that when the military pulled out and virtually, you know, made it available to the city. You know, there's not many of them around here. So, so I think that the concept of regionalization, that, that, that is a huge topic of conversation, not only in this state, you know, all over this country here right now and, and the relationships that are kind of birthed with that. I see interlocal agreements popping up everywhere now. I could see some many interlocal agreements, you know, popping up here. But Aroostook County's got one thing that a lot of the state doesn't have, and that's tourism, and that's snow. And that is a great asset to have here. So I'm just kind of like feeding you into some of the things you got going on here, you know, really to <coughs> bring the people up here. So and some, I think there's going to be some things, the, the model, you're going to have to build it for them to come. I think that's going to be true here, too. So. Awesome. Any other questions from the department here? Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Uh, Ron, what do you see other communities currently doing or getting themselves in position to do as far as addressing? We have a, a critical housing need here, whether it's been exactly from, that. from the, low to high. You're, well, you're, you're hitting a unique area that the federal government also addressed, and we're, we're seeing partnerships in some of Maine's largest cities. And I'll just speak to one that we've got now with Lewiston. You know, and Lewiston has a partnership with the, with the housing authority and the city to bring housing, <laughs> exactly exactly that. Why? Because of all the, the money that was made available to try to change the neighborhoods, try to allow people to work, you know, and have access to, you know, more convenience when they work, have access to, you know, to migrant programs, you know, that are available for housing and, and, and assess that need. There is a lot of money being poured in from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, community development to the housing area, rural development to the housing area, and, I understood that that was a big move for the city of Prescott Island, certainly something at the top of your list. And I can tell you other communities it's at the top of their list too. And, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's, that, that's something that certainly is already there and available for you. Are so, we too late to get on board? No, no, not at all. So I think your housing authority has actually you done some things. Yeah, so. Any other questions? No, but listen, I look forward to, to any future conversations or follow-up that you may have. And Thanks, Ron. Just look forward to, to, to being a sounding board and learning as much as I can and vice versa, giving you as much as my knowledge as I can as well. Perfect. Thanks, Everybody Ron. be well and safe. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now we'll kind of jump into the budget workshop. And it's like we are starting with the public safety building, uh, which for everyone here is on So uh, there are uh, a payroll associated with that because the dispatchers fall under uh, the public safety building. There is no revenue fund for that. Um, basically that encompasses, public safety building is basically exactly that. It's the fire side and the, and the police side, but it's the building aspect of it, not necessarily the workforce, but because uh, we dispatch for so many different communities, um, and, and both sides of the building dispatch wages do fall under that. So we have 13 accounts um, in the public safety building. Two of them have, uh, have not changed, five have actually decreased, and then six have increased. The two that have the biggest increase are um, uh, the wages, uh, <coughs> three really uh, wages, new equipment, and actually boots and uniforms. Uh, the boots and uniform is basically contractually the dispatchers are not uniform, so they would get 
like a, a stipend for uniforms. What we have historically been doing is just buying them stuff when they need it and they don't take the stipend. But it seems like, <laughs> you know, when when they are needing stuff over the over the years, it all comes due at the same time. So uh, in 2023, we're going to revert back to just giving them the stipend so when they need stuff, they, they can get it at, at will. New equipment, we found that this year, and, and hopefully it will go down a little bit next year, but I kept it the same. We've been going through... Um, office chairs, particularly dispatch chairs. Um, we have come to the realization you get what you pay for. We've tried to get, you know, less expensive chairs and they might use them. Of course, we've got four people using basically one chair 24 seven. And uh, we even went with like a gaming chair thinking that that's built for a lot of, <laughs> uh, you know, sitting and maneuvering and, uh, and they don't last long at all, so uh, we're going to look at buying a, a substantially decent chair specifically for uh, dispatching. And then the other account uh, that has <coughs> gone up, so uh, dispatch was uh, included in that um, the uh, raise given by council, and I'm sure they appreciate it for all they do with all the new departments coming on board or that we have and uh, all those changes and different different um, going from the IMC to the Spillman <coughs> console or whatever. So that's really it in a nutshell. If you have any questions about a particular thing, I'll be happy to answer them and, and then I'll Actually, when I we look at the CIP uh, last year, we had the advent of and bad on me is like I'm not really thinking about the HVAC system, but last year we had to replace that, and that was the only thing that we put into the building. But it was sixty, uh, close to seventy thousand. It was sixty-seven thousand, I think. Um, so. With that having that happen, it's like, you know, that furnace isn't gonna last forever, so maybe we ought to start putting some away for when, it, it's in good shape, uh, but it's not gonna last forever. I, uh, that's not really my forte. Yep. I don't know ab about furnaces, but I, I think the city has been looking at propane for different things, and I don't know why it wouldn't heat just as well or as efficiently, but I wouldn't, know to go in there and say uh, yeah absolutely
increase in unpredictability and fuel prices. I mean, that's that's a real curveball to a lot of people that are. What was the building bill? 2001. The CIP for the public safety building is basically unchanged. It's the same uh, things that we've had in there o over the course of, I, I believe, even going back to 2018. So it's the furnace and flooring uh, for replacement, the dispatch console. And although um, this year we did um, council, and thank you so much because that's the brain of our whole department uh, voted to replace that whole thing now because it was going up. This is for uh, longevity of, of like a 10 year out replacing the one that was purchased new this year. Uh, that's about the lifespan of it. So that's not like a drastic need that we wanted to start putting away because we came to the realization that's about the lifespan of, of, of those and it will be would need to be replaced. And the the biggest thing, we had put some things in there, uh, laptops to try to get in and piecemeal those, but we could, we could definitely do that with um, forfeitures. We also have overhead door motors in there. Um, they run right, right now, unless it's gone up, Daryl, I don't know, about $2,000 a piece. Uh, those have, we've replaced one or two. Uh, there are six uh, overhead doors eventually will need those, so about $12,000. So we're kind of putting a little bit away for those. Uh, the furnace, the console, like I said, that's just for replacement costs and uh, down the road. I, I would say, um, you know, if there are of course, the CIP is at, is at the, um, you know, council's <coughs> bidding. But I would say our big, our biggest need out of these things and the stuff we've already put, have money put away for and put away for in the past few years is the flooring. The flooring we we need to uh, in the new year have a contractor come in, give us a new estimate and start. We had originally got an estimate from Sullivan's Flooring and they uh, and we had asked for a floor similar to what is here, that rubberized tile. It can be, you can do a portion, come back and do another thing and it's, seam and it's seamless. It has, I want to, I think they quoted us at like a 50 year lifespan and they said it doesn't matter if you walk on it, roll furniture across it, like in dispatch we've replaced dispatch flooring parts of it with just normal tile twice. Um, but there are spots in there that are, are going to become uh, are a tripping hazard at this point. Um, our side has some really bad spots, the fire department side, their lobby, the tiles are starting to come up and there, there's always pieces and parts laying around, there are parts on the uh, police side, uh, in the admin hallway, the start of dispatch, and by the locker rooms. I mean, there's whole portions of tile that are just gone. And that was built kind of on a swampy area. And I call it the fault line. You can follow a crack all the way around the building, floor up the wall across the ceiling. The, you could split that building in half pretty easily and that's where <laughs> usually the issue the issues are um, but like I said the the one thing that is the one um, account that you know uh, you know if you don't put in into any of them I would ask that that is the one that the that you continue because we got to start re at least start replacing the portions that are the worst what's the what's the DMS software we had taken that out. So DMS software is, it, it's a policy building. Um, they look at all your policies, they go through, they make, every, make sure everything is legally, constitutionally, is by 
standard, um, follows what the nation is doing, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's very expensive, but you can say, here's our personnel, here are the current policies we have, they'll write them, any updates, they have the lawyers look at them, blah, blah, blah. Um, <coughs> but, it, but it's very expensive and you would need something like that if we wanted to be, um, if we wanted to be uh, certified. Or, is that or a uh, one-time purchase or is that like No, a it's that much on a yearly basis. Um, but uh, we have been checking around and found through MMA offers the same thing for free. Oh. And they're like, they're like, we won't do it start to finish like DM Power DMS will. There's several different versions of it. Um, if we want to be accredited, we that's the one most people are saying you need this to be accredited. Not really many people around here get accredited, quite frankly, just because it's expensive. There's a $600 a year now, and I'm sure it will go up, cost just, just a fee every year to be accredited. And I've had this discussion with Caribou and Fort Fairfield and, and the SO and, um, you know, the state will every once in a while say, have you ever looked at being accredited? And we're like, we have, and they're like, well, what do you think? And I said, it's just too expensive. What's the benefit? Basically, the benefit is if you have like a liability type issue, they'll say, oh, you're accredited, so there's. Right, right. And so really much, not much more than that. Um, like I said, we checked around through some of the different things and got, we got a hold of the Maine <coughs> Chiefs Association and they said, hey, look at MMA. I'm pretty sure they do the same thing. So we did call them and they said, yeah, we will do that. We don't do it start to finish. And they said, you basically have to, one at a time, send us your policy. We will look at it. We will put it in our format and we will, we will do the same thing and we will update them from there. But you have to load it. You have to do all the upfront paperwork. And they said, once you have done that, then we will continue to update them, edit them, make sure they have to meet, every policy has to meet certain legal stand, standards, especially use of force. Uh, that, that was changed, I think, six times this year through the legislature. Um, so, we would get that and say your model policy has to be changed. It has to include this if you don't already have it. And it will have MLEAP standards, main chief of police standards. Um, so MMA will do that. We will have to do all the upfront work. And they said, and if you ever get accredited, their, their system is this, the same thing. It's, this, it's good for the accreditation. They said the only difference is, is you'll have to pay the fee. But they take that as as well as they take uh, the power DMS. So, no, that's I mean that's good for me. If MMA will do it for free, I just want to make sure they weren't. No, no, it was something. So it was something that we were we were looking at, and sure. and but I think we're we're good with that. It's, I cross that right off in mind. So, Thank you. I'd like to ask for my money on how they go. We have been putting some in in prior years, but it's, it has started, it has gone down a few times and we're like, well, we don't have radio okay. phones. We can't like tone out fire departments, especially for, I mean, our building, theoretically, we could send somebody say run next door and tell them, you know, fire, 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 or whatever, or they need an ambulance. But for the ones that that's all you know, that we tone out from the console, like East, East in Mapleton, um, you know, if we have mutual aid for, or for whatever, um, we're like, that's really, <laughs> we really need that. And like I said, we, we did use um, uh, some monies. I say we, the council agreed to do that. And um, 
to replace it this this year it won't be installed for another few months um, and so what is in there now is for just going forward should that new <laughs> one ever quit in 10 12 15 years so so we're not looking at oh geez we got to come up with a hundred <coughs> thirty-six department is four line items. Uh, two were increased, two were decreased. Basically it uh, covers the power for the traffic lights and street lights in Prescow and for the cost of the hydrants and for the repair of the traffic lights. Uh, just like to speak mostly to the hydrants. Uh, the Prescow Utility District is increasing the water rates by 15% effective January 1st. Uh, the hydrants is a pretty major expense. Uh, 2022 is over a half a million dollars. Uh, so that line item is going to increase by almost $79,000. I, at least the version of the budget I'm looking at, at the time we did the budget, uh, the Prescott Utilities District estimated it was going to be a 10% increase. So it's going to be 15, so this will have to be increased uh, by 20, where's the number? 26,326 to get it to the 15%. Um, sometimes the question arises. Can we eliminate some hydrants and save some money? And it doesn't work that way. Uh, the fee is assessed based on uh, the overall cost of treatment of water in Prescott, and we're allowed to charge 30%. So I believe that's what they do charge. So that's it's called hydrant rental, but it's more a fire protection fee that's approved by the PUC and state law. Uh, the other item, just a couple of minutes on, is street lights. Uh, this has actually decreased uh, again this year by $2,198. Uh, Emera replaced uh, over 700 lights from high pressure sodium to LED in 2019. And uh, I was not involved with that. Martin was, and some of the council. Uh, that created a significant savings of over $50,000 a year. So at that time, there were some fixtures that could not change out. There were 33 fixtures that couldn't change out. Uh, we asked them to change them out, uh, I think starting the end of, about a year ago, and they have changed out uh, another 29, so there's only four left. And I've asked them to find out why those haven't been changed, but um, that, conversion to LED definitely saved the city a lot of money. So that was a good decision by the city. Personally too, uh, of course it's Versa now versus Emera, but we had two lights out uh, last week, called them, and thankfully we went with Versa uh, because we don't have to get up there and ch figure out what's wrong with those fixtures. We just call them and that's part of the service. They, they have to repair them. Uh, and the last item is just traffic light maintenance for the traffic lights. Um, we're responsible to uh, maintain the system. We hire Peter LaJoy, LaJoy Electric, to do that. So <coughs> that is it, unless you have any questions. I, I think the only thing to add to the street lights is we did receive a proposal um, to upgrade the street lights um, to improve how they are synced up throughout Main Street. Um, and with NDOT talking about redoing Main Street here, 
it would in, the proposal that they're talking about would include new traffic lights throughout the city. So rather than in the next few years they're looking to start that project, rather than putting more money towards the traffic light, we should put that money to the redesigning of the street. Okay. Are there no capital requests for this There are no capital requests. Expenses. We, we did do a $1.7 uh, million dollar bond, and that includes the various departments. If you remember, we did that um, in the past, so we put a few different departments in that. So it did include um, some of the rep improvements we did, and City Hall renovations, and um, some for the Industrial Council, too. So you see there's a big reduction, um, $110,000 uh, for this year. Uh, for 2023, we're looking at 24,000. So that's mainly due to the industrial council in um, taking care of their debt. So that's that's why you're seeing a big reduction in there. So kudos to the industrial council. <coughs> um, the next few items, uh, we can have Tom speak to that. Um, the question was last night: Does the operating, does the revenue from the industrial council lead to a net positive for the city? Yes. So including these amounts that we were. even considering all these. Um, the largest item is the community center, um, and we did uh, do, this is one of the uh, rare occasions that we did go to bond for this to get a low rate. So that's our um, annual payment, so it does fluctuate a, a little bit from year to year. Uh, public works garage, uh, there's $350,000 that's left that's gonna be due for the, for the public works garage. That's comes due in 2027, uh, 2025, thank you. Uh, so just, uh, we're on the verge. So I'm like by the time that's done, we should probably pay another year or two and make the building right again. There are some, you're right, there are you some know, where we, We're already experiencing the pain of that, just put that much into the building for a year or two. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of these, um, Really, if you have some questions, I, I kind of lean on Tom to talk about some of these specifics. Uh, the Coca-Cola building, Sputnik, uh, Monaco, and Northeast Packaging. Uh, Tom would be better able to speak to those individual line items than, than myself. Uh, I guess a good summation of almost all those projects would be following a little bit of what Ron Smith spoke about earlier. Uh, we've opted to go a little deeper into our debt mode, but with a quicker payoff than what been traditionally done in the past instead of looking at 20 years and 30 years and whatever length we accelerated the payoff on these new assets that have been built uh, and, and tried to get down to six years and seven years and something that makes a very good business sense to do that's where some of the revenue that will not be being returned to the city's general fund is being directed towards uh, so it, it makes our picture look a little worse than it truly is but if you look past the monetary side of it, you're looking at three or four brand new buildings that the city will own for whatever their lifespan will be, 50, 60 years, whatever their projected lifespan is. Uh, so it's really a long-term objective of having more to offer to the community, uh, retaining and bringing in people into the community, quicker payoffs, and, and a, a lot of the assets that we have been dealing with are military leftovers received for a dollar or whatever the consideration was. Uh, we did some upgrades to some of these and, and, and were able to make a pretty decent profit on most of those. But instead of having a building that was built in 1960 or 1970 or whatever it may be, we now have them that are built in 2019 or 2020. Uh, and we've traded out a half a million dollars to this, to somebody else, but for the additional half a million dollars have a brand new one. I think we've upgraded our car. I guess that would be a good analogy to the whole thing. Is uh, you can keep your car forever, and then when it comes time to buy a new one, you'll have a little sticker shock. We've done a good job of keeping our model fairly new, 
and our trade-in value is pretty high. Uh, but that's a, a good an analogy as I can give on that, I guess. Uh, debt service-wise, like I said last night, we, we take responsibility for all the debt that we incur. And I think that's a very business-like attitude to do it. It's not, we realize we're not truly a service industry. Our mission is an economic one in bringing jobs and everything else. But uh, these people, they have to be here in order to have a, a city. Uh, we don't necessarily have to be here for Prescott to be here. So we try to operate more like a business attitude because you know that's the way it should be run, quite frankly. Is there any one of the particular dead areas that you would like to ask a particular question on? Coca-Cola came in on budget, uh, on time. Uh, so did the one that we built in 2019 uh, that's currently was leased before it was completed. And uh, the new one that we have scheduled to be building this winter, uh, I think we're being very fair with our numbers with that too. So I don't know, we've had a pretty good time. Um, the Sputnik project, we're probably about 40,000 under budget. Uh, and we did more <coughs> than what we had spoken to Sputnik that we would do. We made a better building than what we were negotiating for. We used concrete instead of asphalt. We, we did more than we said we would do, and it, and it shows. So at the industrial council meeting earlier today, um, there was some interest from the board um, to look at um, what sort of taxes are paid up in the industrial council, uh, both personal property and property, and just kind of a ballpark of the numbers. So I think it would just be interesting to see the, the value of, of, of that to the community too. So. Uh, a couple years ago, we were tasked with trying to figure out about how many jobs were up there. We put in an estimate somewhere in that 800 area between 750, 900. W-2s is the way we said it, because we'd have no way of really knowing the amount. We have no way of knowing or wanting to ask employers, how much does Tom get paid? Uh, but think about all the excise tax. And <coughs> it's like pretty sizable. Yeah, it's pretty sizable. So uh, during that meeting this morning, we will probably work this winter towards coming up with some kind of figures of what the, the park area generates positive or, or what, what it brings to the city, I guess. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, anything else for the department? Or is it there? No, that's it. I, I think the other good thing to point out is that we do see some increases, uh, significant increases from last year uh, for two of those properties, Coke and uh, Sputnik, and it has the, the acronym LHI, Lease <coughs> Improvements. So those are actually paid by, um, they design that into the rent in increases. So those are based on payments that are being, um, you're seeing the revenue generate to offset those. So is there a related uh, revenue account? Exactly, there, there are. Where, yeah. where, where's that at? In um, so that was in, in the industrial council uh, revenue line item. Okay. It, yep. It's all broke down with that, Mike. Uh, okay. It's funny, the six figure number was was written a check to, to the city of Prescott for their portion of the leasehold no, improvements. I, I hadn't noticed it, but that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to tie those two together. Sure. Awesome. Okay, uh, next up is Echo Lake. And Martin, I'm assuming you're taking this one? Yes, okay. uh, really nothing to report. You see in the, in the, in the past, we've, um, this has gone all the way up to $10,000. Right now, what we're trying to design is a, is a system that pays for itself. So there's $8,200 in revenues. Um, we've had new agreements with all the, all the uh, 14 different homes that are located down there. Um, we, do, we did get uh, congressional earmark funding for this uh, and also uh, county ARPA funds to help replace the system. Uh, we're hoping that that will begin in the spring with, for a total replacement. And then, um, so right now the only expenses we have are, with that is the electrical service to, uh, to run the pumps that are down there. Um, the pump, basically, we have one major collection point and that runs up hill to a leach field. And so the new system would be less expensive to operate. Um, and we, we do put around $1,000 in repairs or repairs that need to be done. Typically, it's there to the pump when it needs to be updated. So it generates $8,200 in, in revenue. Um, the expense is $1,500. And what the agreement that we have with the homeowners is any expenses um, goes back to the capital fund for future replacement. 
The end goal, of course, is to have um, that system move on to a different owner. So whether that be uh, a life association that would operate that or s uh, some other entity, um, in the future we're hoping this wouldn't be a city asset that we would have to worry about and the, the fund would help. In the future, the capital fund would be generated within that uh, sewer system. So there's a variety of different things here. Um, IT is a lot of it. It has to do with our operating system. Uh, Trio is what we use to register cars, uh, do accounts payable and accounts receivable. Basically, it's how we function. It's a business software that we have in operation. So that um, annually it is around twenty-three thousand dollars. So that's that's HR software that we use for payroll. Um, the only thing that's separate is what you're seeing with this, the Quest Vista software. Um, so that's the, the big difference in the, what you're seeing from year to year uh, is the addition of Quest Vista software. Um, the other addition that we use day to day is the Microsoft email exchange, uh, $500 per month for the cloud. Um, so between, those are the, the main um, expenses that we, that we have associated with this. Um, the other one you're seeing is the utilities expenses that are associated with IT. Um, the internet for City Hall, for Public Works, uh, the website, uh, which I do have some layouts in front of you. I know I emailed it out <coughs> to you individually, would like to get your input for that. So the first, uh, we have a second payment for uh, revises in that, um, in the web domain. So it's pretty straightforward, it's, it's basically IT, it, it's, it's our software. It's uh, we don't have what the actual cost for Trio is. Usually it's about a 3% increase here for software. Um, we do hope by the November meeting to get those current costs. Um, but that's what we're led to believe is just going to be 3%. So all, all said and done, um, it was 67000 last year. We anticipated being around $77,000. Just that you see, it's on a four-year cycle for presidential elections. <coughs> increase that line, and, and Kim um, discussed with me about having uh, we have two really well-seasoned uh, uh, people that have handled elections, um, and they've agreed to come in and, and help out. Um, basically, three weeks before the election <coughs> is when it starts getting really busy. Um, a lot of requests come in through email. a steady stream. Um, the other thing we've been, we've gotten in a lot of help from the state. 
updated machines. If you look uh, at City Hall, you see this gigantic stainless steel um, box mounted to the out, out front of City Hall. Uh, the state gave us this uh, secure ballot box that we have a camera on it during election. So people can get their absentee ballot, they can fill it right there in City Hall with the nice new um, stations that we built in the lobby, or, or else sometimes they take it they take it home, fill it out, and they can drop that off 24 hours a day. So it's a, it's a locked box that we, that we use. Um, happy that the contractors got set it up. So in the end, it's um, the revenues that the clerk's office is bringing in is offsetting the, the expenses. So it's, it's a pretty sound budget. The only requests, so it's not any capital, the requests are all contained in the budget? Uh, no, I don't believe there is. I think it's all just operating. So we're looking at what the future of this holds um, and seeing what, what will happen. So it could be next time we, we may make some recommendations, make some adjustments to this. I guess the other other thing to discuss too is Kim's done a good job of putting um, budget, separating this out between food, fuel, miscellaneous prescriptions, and rental housing. Those are just estimates. Um, overall, it's just it's it's a lump sum that we put in that account. Um, but majority of it goes to rental assistance and housing. Yeah. And I've had problems <coughs> three, four burials a year, the last couple of years, over the fact that there's yet a lot of the homeless that are that, that passed away and mm -hmm. you know, back then and family and everything. So. Well, on that incredibly positive note, let's um, <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> so that's our last department for the budget. Does any capitalist have anything to add on that department? Okay, so it's 6.15. We're about an hour ahead of schedule, um, and we have made it through almost all of our departments um, for the city. We still have some uh, bigger ones coming up. Um, looks like uh, November <coughs>
HR is, is one of them. Um, it's on page 89, and I can we just real quickly describe what's happening there. La this for this year, we, we um, have a budget of 85,000, and we're looking for about a 10 percent increase around uh, 95,000 um, dollars. So that nine thousand dollar difference. What we because of we have some vacant positions, we do need to do uh, for certain positions, fire, firefighter, PD, public works, we do have to do drug testing um, for, for new employees and reoccurring <coughs> public works. So knowing that we have these vacant positions, we're, we're trying to be proactive and increase the, the amount. Um, we have seen an increase in the cost for, for uh, drug testing, um, and we've been notified for that. So that is something we're, we're looking to do. Um, so alcohol tests, drug tests, pre-employment physicals, um, we're just looking at the number of vacancies that we have and just boosting it out knowing that. We're full anticipation we're going to fill these vacant positions as, as we're trying to do in the budget. Um, and we've seen other slight increases too for um, the normal supply. So this department does payroll, so they've been notified that they've been increasing some of the forms that we've been doing with W-2s and, and, and um, some of that. Um, and there is some training for the HR director <coughs> also. Um, it's important with all these changes <coughs> in, in federal and, and state guidelines for employment that stay up to date, much like we were talking about the PD. We need to be aware of all these changes in the workplace. Um, so that's, uh, it's one person that's in that department, so it's only one. Um, it's the, the wages associated with that, just for one. And so of course, phone lines uh, are, are associated with that too. We'll see a slight increase in that one also. Any questions from council or resource management? Okay. Um, and with that, did you want to cover another one, Martin, or was that one better? Um, there's the other one is employee employee benefits and, and insurances. Um, I think with those we should probably hold off because I don't. Those two really we're, we're still waiting for what the final increases from insurances will be on that. Um, so probably I, I have a more accurate presentation next time, more, more accurate numbers. Excellent. Well, uh, the future of the budget meetings, again, uh, for anyone who may watch these, um, these last few meetings we've had are just presentations from our department heads, an overview of their budget so the council can take the budget into consideration and then second.